And uh, with that, we're going to uh, bring on our next guest, Randy Jessup. How are you? Hi, Tony. Welcome good to the Tony you. Hernandez Show. Terrific. And you, Randy, you know Jeff. Good to meet you. Jeff, good to meet you. So you are taking over for Tony. I will be Tony. taking over. We will be repackaging everything, and we're going to start everything fresh. What, is, what does repackage mean exactly? <laughs> repackage yeah. just mainly new name, and we just get some other things that I'm toying with right now to you know, get a little bit more active in the community. So it looks like, uh, Randy, your, your website here is Randy442A, that's four spelled out, F-O-R, so R-A-N-D-Y442A.com. And the uh, question for you is how, how are you feeling about the campaign uh, uh, from sure. your perspective, from your district, mm -hmm. and then also what are the chances of the Republicans taking the majority of the state house this year? Good. I think uh, we're feeling very, very good, Tony, about the, the campaign. Um, we aren't privy to any polls, of mm -hmm. course, um, and one of the things that is always a discouragement to a candidate is all the negative advertising mm -hmm. that, that occurs, and we've had our share of negative advertising. Um, but those who have gone through negative camps, advertising against you, like yes, yes, I mean, oh, like it's the Tea Party, Randy Chesson. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you've seen it. You've seen it. <laughs> but uh, those who have done campaigns, and I, I think you can probably relate that uh, once that occurs, that's usually a, a good sign that you're polling well. And certainly with uh, the reception that I've gotten, knocking on folks' doors and so forth, it's been very positive. So we're feeling very optimistic. Campaign is going well. We've uh, got lots of volunteers out there. We've done a lot of marketing. And certainly we've got a, quite a plethora, I would say, of, of yard signs out in the area. And people have really asked. What, quite what a area are you running in? Good question. Uh, Shoreview, Arden Hills, and Moundsview. Okay, so that's that a yeah, that's a pretty. Uh, you it's know, a very middle of the road. Middle district. of the road district, yes. Very. And who 50 is it 50. that you're uh, running against? Um, an incumbent, Barbie Russo. She's okay. been in for one term. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, she's she's very much a uh, a Democrat. So who so who was <laughs> before Barb? Then was it a Republican or was it a Democrat? Um, I think it was a Democrat. Okay. As well. Yeah, I'm trying to recall. We haven't had a Republican, I think, uh, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, this is uh, this is a challenge for us, but it's been uh, it's been very very positive. How about uh, mm -hmm. did she? Uh, I'm assuming mm -hmm. she voted for uh, the implementation of Mincher. She did. And yes. what is uh, what are the people in in your district in 42A? What are they saying about about Mincher? Are they um, mm -hmm. happy with how it's running, or sure. what do they want to see done with it? We haven't had lots of conversation really on Mincher. We've okay. had some, Tony. It hasn't been at the priority list. Mm -hmm. um, you know, jobs, the economy is definitely up there. Mm -hmm. And then for us, Moundsview School District is is one of the top school districts in the state. Mm -hmm. So those are the primary concerns that I've heard of. Mm -hmm. On on the Mincher, what I have heard is um, there are very very much a lot of how should I say it? There's a lot of folks who were very, very frustrated trying to use Minsure, and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I've also felt it because I employ people. Okay, I've got a number of different associates, and one of my managers had that experience as well. Mm -hmm. And she was very, very stressed in the in the November through December time period, and she finally got through. But we have had lots of of. What I have heard is issues with the site, mm -hmm. and I think I've, you know, we've got the advertising out there and so forth about the concerns that what's going to happen in this second year. We mm -hmm. had preferred one drop out, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to see quite a uh, quite a reaction come November to uh, to Minsher, but mm -hmm. it'll probably be after the election. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be after the election when folks who are going now to try and reapply and to make sure they uh, are going to see a lot of sticker shock. So you mentioned uh, <coughs> you mentioned jobs and the economy and mm -hmm. you know if you watch the uh, gubernatorial debates uh, some of them that have already taken place you know what Dayton will talk about Governor Dayton will say that uh, you know he, uh, things have gotten better under his leadership and what you'll hear uh, Johnson say the the Republican candidate against Dayton is that things are not recovering fast enough and mm -hmm. that people's incomes are uh, stagnant and there's a lot of room for improvement what are you hearing yeah. in your district are, do people do people 
are they getting used to this new normal mm -hmm. or are people still seeking better career and job opportunities? I think, I think people are always going to be seeking better job opportunities when they're available. Um, what I have heard is I've heard from, from folks that, quite honestly, what they're employed with isn't fulfilling their, their skill set. Um, and all of their talents and abilities. So they're looking at, mm -hmm. I'm not able to fully utilize mm -hmm. all that I have to offer. Mm -hmm. Others that are saying, you know what, I'm employed, but I'm employed for 28 to 30 hours where I'd really like to have a full-time job, mm -hmm. and I don't have that opportunity mm -hmm. in well, front speaking of. Speaking of skill sets, <coughs> you know, Randy was kind enough to bring one of his uh, campaign literature pieces here for us, mm -hmm. and it says on here that you're an Eagle Scout. Yes. So can you give, me, give us a little bit of about uh, Eagle Scout and how that's sure. going to help you legislate and sure. also but just about your background in general and what made you decide to run for the legislature? Sure, sure. Uh, a lot of questions there. I'll, I'll just give you a little, <laughs> bit, of, little bit of background first. I am an Eagle Scout and actually my two sons are also Eagle Scouts. Nice. Um, and an Eagle Scout, when you become an Eagle Scout, one of the most important things is really your integrity. Um, is what I have found. Certainly all of us can look to our, our faith as well if, if we've got a, a religious affiliation. But Scouts is very much um, my duty to my, my God and my country. And really the, the duty to country and your fellow citizen is very, very important. And so when you actually become an Eagle Scout, that becomes a significant event that the scouting organization basically lays in front of each boy that becomes an Eagle Scout and says, hey, when you become an Eagle Scout, you re represent all of us. Okay, you're always going to have this on your resume. Make sure that you uphold to the standards uh, that we have we have established. So it 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 is a it's a responsibility as well as mm -hmm. a sense of accomplishment um, that I like to put out there. My background is I began as a chemical engineer. Um, I have a, a bachelor of arts, a bachelor of science degree from. Uh, the University of Minnesota in Chemical Engineering. Mm. I did what's called a 3-2 program, so I actually have a Bachelor of Arts degree as well from Bethel University. Wow. Why that's important is Bethel University is in our district, in Arden Hills. Mm. Um, I also have an MBA from the University of Minnesota. Began my career as a scientist working for Pillsbury as a research and development scientist. Actually got three patents while I was there, and then I transitioned over into marketing and sales. And Wow. Believe me, that everyone wants to everyone wants to stereotype <laughs> you. Yeah, everyone wants to stereotype. Okay, you're a scientist. You're always going to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. But I had enough folks around me that said, "Yeah, you've got you've got skills. You can show and demonstrate." So I made the transition over into marketing. And mm -hmm. then I was at Pillsbury. I was down at Quaker Oats Company down in Chicago. Worked on oatmeal, Captain Crunch. Great oatmeal. Um, my son loves uh, Quaker Oat oatmeal. Well, that, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> no, my favorite. That's too. good. <laughs> and uh, while there, my my biggest contribution was actually taking instant oatmeal and putting it into a cup oh, yeah. such that you add water put it in the microwave heat it up oh yeah you, you, was, you came up with this yeah idea? that was that wow. was my that was my yeah, that was my idea and we did that for warehouse clubs to begin with and then mm -hmm. it is expanded into grocery stores as well mm -hmm. as into uh, some some of the restaurants mm -hmm. as well foods food service any event I came back here then to work at Ecolab and um, there I was also in marketing but I found myself in the great position of you're in the, the right position at the right time and the company needs to downsize you. So I, right after 9-11, the country went through a little bit of a, a down, oh, yeah. down slide and I found myself unemployed. Mm -hmm. And I tell that to folks. I was unemployed for six months. So I, I know the angst, I know the financial stresses that come with being unemployed. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've never forgotten that. Certainly I've had some good experiences in my life, but that one is very important because I want to be able to set, tell folks, you know what, that's really my passion. If I become a representative, I really want our economy in the state to grow. I want it to be a much better employment situation than we have today in our marketplace. And that involves, we want to do everything we can to have Minnesota companies grow, invest, and expand in our state. That's going to lead to more jobs, but also it's going to lead to higher paying jobs. So that's kind of, kind of some of the background um, around one of the reasons why I'm, I'm looking t for this opportunity. So it, you know, what you stated there in your, in your last sentence about having jobs created here in the state, uh, mm -hmm. that sounds great. Um, what specifically or, or what policies specifically would you support, would sure. you uh, author in order for businesses to stay here, for mm -hmm. businesses to come here? And then also, 
Uh, what, I, what I'm concerned with is I saw the number um, in terms of entrepreneurial startup businesses and right. uh, Minnesota ranks like at the very bottom of the nation now mm -hmm. in terms of uh, new businesses, which is just mm -hmm. shocking to me given the entrepreneurial history of this state with all the great companies that have started right here yeah. to now be at the bottom uh, is concerning. But what, what policy ideas and, and what bills would you support and author sure. to create sure. jobs? Here in Minnesota. Tony, I, w I wish I could tell you some specifics on that. I mm -hmm. don't know that I've got specifics, but I, I will say that when it comes to entrepreneurs and starting small businesses, mm -hmm. I mean, and this is kind of a plug, <laughs> but at the UPS store, what we do is we have mailboxes at mm -hmm. our stores. And so instead of, if you start a small business, you don't want to put down your home address as that business address because there's a potential, okay, someone's going to come and you really don't want someone coming to your home. Mm -hmm. So we interact and we engage a lot of individuals that come into our stores thinking about opening a mailbox and thinking about a small business. Mm -hmm. One of the organizations that does a really good job in helping folks that are interested in starting a small business is SCORE. It's a number of retired um, business people, lots of different backgrounds, and they're out there. It's a, it's, it's a nonprofit uh, effort, and someone, whoever is interested in starting a business in Minnesota, that's a great resource mm. for them to have, and we encourage folks to go that way. Well, I will agree with you. I started a small business. It's still small, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm also currently going through an MBA program right at the moment, so that's kind of the lion's share of my time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you mentioned about UPS stores. How many do you own? I own four. I own four now. I uh, I began and with that's one franchised operation. Those are franchise operations, and and I've never done you know civic representation, but I have done representation in the UPS store organization. We have forty four hundred stores or more across the country, and there's seven individuals that represent all of the franchisees with our franchisor and also with UPS directly. And so for the last four years, I actually chaired that committee. Wow. And so um, I, I've done a lot of representation. In fact, this last spring, I went to UPS as one of the franchisees. There wasn't many of us, but there was a few. And twice, because that's their headquarters in Atlanta, and we were talking about some new programs that, that will impact and be beneficial for customers as well as consumers. That revolve around UPS deliveries as well as the UPS store. So I've done representation. I gave that up in July when I began this effort. Mm -hmm. But it was a very, very good experience for me to get a, an, an understanding of okay, how do you work with various parties to get something accomplished that's for the greater good of, in the end, for our business, it's going to be the customers. Well, that's the same way really representation should work overall irregardless of whether it's city, county, state, or federal, is we all, as representatives, need to work for the common good of the individuals we represent. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the key objective, and quite honestly, that's, that's one of the passions that I would have, is to make sure that it's not just what's my agenda, it's not just what is a party's agenda, it's more of what's the agenda, what's important, the value for the individuals in my district. One of the questions that mm -hmm. I typically have for candidates is when did you come up with the idea that you wake up one day and say I'm gonna run for state representative well, what led to you running I mean with such an accomplished yeah. background in business as yours you know between the engineering and then the, the sales and marketing yeah. and franchising and representation why do you want to be a state representative and get into this mess well you know um, I, I had a number of folks say I should do this um, and so I had a number of Linda Runbeck Roger Chamberlain would be two that have, have come alongside over the last about three years. But the specific answer to your question is last spring I put forward legislation as a citizen. I had Republicans and I had Democrats author a bill. It was a bill to essentially update an old law, a law that had been on the books for 30 years. It wasn't partisan, it was related to notary public service. And one of the issues that we've got with notary publics is over the last five to seven years, the number of notaries in the state has gone down by about 25%. So this was an issue as well for the Secretary of State's office, and they weighed in and said, yeah, what Randy is proposing is really a good thing. We should do this. And all it was was allowing notaries to be able to charge more than just a dollar per signature. Charge more. And the reason being is, is that the fees to become a notary 
had gone up by over what six times. What does it cost times. to become a notary? $140. Anywhere in the state? Yeah, pretty, I, I believe so. It's at least 120 and then it's 20 per the county. Okay. And, and I don't know if out, oh, outside. Oh, wow. So you have to be a notary in the county. In the county, you yes. Yes, the, you have okay. to register with the state as well as with the county. Mm -hmm. And you and you're only registered for four years. And so when you look at the cost as well as the potential revenue to be a notary, it, it was a very much and not a very good value. And as a result, all of the notaries, there was less and less. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, mm -hmm. the, the times that you need a notary in your life are pretty, pretty few and far between. I use them a lot in the, in the mortgage business. You do. They, we need to have no, everything right. notarized at the right. end of the day. Yes. So. And, and they you, seem to get paid all right doing they're, that. They're okay. That's a different, it is a different scenario. Okay. But, it, but if, if by chance you need to get a will notarized and uh -huh. you're not using a lawyer, you're doing it on your own, um, or You're doing some a other favor thing. A lot of times, I'm yes, sure. and so and and individuals in our community are frantic to find a notary, and they can't find them. Mm -hmm. I've and actually so been through that a few times, where this place used to have a notary, and then oh no, we we don't have that anymore. We've got it. I go to another place. Oh yeah, we used to have one about five years ago, but we don't have it anymore. And you're right, it's it's you're tough right. to find a notary right. unless you happen to be in like the mortgage industry. Where so did your did your bill so pass the that? bill? Yeah, I had to spend a lot of time to okay. answer your question fully. I had to spend a lot of time collaborating with both Republicans as well as with Democrats down at the Capitol, and we actually got the bill passed. My last conversation was probably the most important. That was with Tom Bach. Mm -hmm. Majority leader for the Senate. There was a bill, or the, the scheduling of the bill to go before the House was actually accomplished. But we were in the last week of, uh, well, I think it was the third week of May. And so I managed to catch Tom Bach in the hallway and I said, Tom, I said, here's what's going to happen. This is going to get voted upon by the House on Tuesday, next week. If everything goes well, can you make sure that it gets a vote in the Senate before you guys adjourn? Because, you know, this is just a short little deal, but nothing will happen unless you get it, you know, for a vote in the Senate. Well, Tom said, yeah, you know what, let's just see what happens in the House, and then if it does, then we'll take a look at it. Well, this is a Democrat, but he was true to his word. It was the last piece of legislation that was voted upon before the Senate adjourned wow. for the session. So it passed all the way through, and Governor Dayton signed it into law in June. So I've had the opportunity to, if nothing else, experience, yes, the process can work, mm -hmm. and I've had the opportunity to work with legislators down at the Capitol to mm -hmm. get something done. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the impetus that said, maybe then I could represent folks in our particular district. Mm. So... A little Absolutely. different answer for you, but <clears throat> it was it was very hey, as long as it's experience. truthful and as an yes. Eagle Scout, you didn't lose your integrity. <laughs> I have no problem with your answer. <laughs> Thank you. And one for one for uh, getting a bill. For That's you. right. So that's, yes. uh, a you pretty know, good record. Right considering there. that Betty McCollum was the subject of our previous uh, yes. discussion in the, in the first half of the show, you know, what's her batting average? You, as a as a wow. civilian, have a better batting average than. Uh, than, than Congresswoman McCollum seems to have in 14 years in the Congress. Sure, sure. Well, I, I don't know if the comparison is a good comparison, but I do appreciate <laughs> you're trying to make that. So, so that's been good. So, um, so have, you, have you been uh, able to work with Minority Leader Doubt at all? Has he? I have. Campaign? Yes, and you had asked that question early on, and, and uh, Kurt has been terrific for us. I think I've met with Kurt at least a couple occasions. He's been out like three times to our district to actually do door knocking, and we've had other representatives that have come out and done door knocking Such as, as well. Uh, we had Denny um, Mengen down in Hastings, um, Tim. I can't remember his last name, up in Blaine. Mm -hmm. Another gentleman down from, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it wrong, but I believe Burnsville, mm -hmm. down in that area. So, And then we've had a, a plethora of other folks as well that have come from outside the district to actually help us. But to answer your question up front, you had asked, you know, what do you think about the, the House actually uh, mm -hmm. becoming uh, Republican mm -hmm. dominance come after Tuesday. And I, I do believe there's a really good opportunity there. Um, I think the folks that are Republicans are feeling optimistic. And clearly, you know, it, it does look like there's at least 12 contested uh, races. And I think there's a few others that actually may turn towards the Republicans as well. So the, the chances are, are pretty strong, I think, that it will occur. 
Have there been any <coughs> independent expenditures either for you or against you? Uh, very much both ways. And, and uh, I tell my friends, I say, you know, by all of the TV advertising and the Internet advertising, I'm probably the worst person in the world. You know, I'm just I'm just a terrible individual. Mm. So um, yes, there's definitely out there, and the the other side of it though is the Republican independent groups are going after my incumbent or our incumbent as well, and that is the first time that um, some folks in our district has seen that occur in quite a few races. So it, it's definitely a very competitive race, and it's getting lots of attention from outside groups. How's your health been? I know mm -hmm. a lot of candidates start to break down at this sure. point of exhaustion. You, you got enough stamina to make it all the I, way? I think so. You know, I, and I don't know if I, if I mentioned it in there, but I'm a marathon runner. Mm. So in addition to all the campaigning, um, four weeks ago I ran the Twin City Marathon. So I, 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 I do that on the side, and, and the marathon went well. Um, it was actually a, a better one for me. I was. It was a beautiful I day was, for it. Yes, it was yeah. a good, good, good weather day, and so I was under four hours, and I, I did fairly well for wow, myself. Wow, that's so, pretty impressive. So we were, so we were pleased. So I'm on your uh, website, yes. uh, Randy442a.com, mm -hmm. uh, F-O-R, Randy442a.com, and uh, I see a picture. It looks like you have a, a beautiful family here, and you know you sure. mentioned the negative ads that are going uh, up against you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure people who mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned the negative ads that are going out against you, and I'm sure people who uh, haven't run for office before are curious about this but um, do do these negative things and, and perhaps lies that are being told about you um, does that affect how does that affect your family and, and how sure. are you guys staying centered and grounded through this you know a good question I think um, one, one of the accusations is that I'm against mammograms for women so one of the things that uh, that I discussed it was actually at the Women's League of Voters Forum, mm -hmm. as I said, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I gotta, I gotta correct this situation. And a, a little less than a year ago, my mom went in for her mammogram, and she was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer. And you know, she's gone through the surgery, she's gone through the radiation, she's gone through chemo, she's going through an, another stage of chemo just for s safety and and such, and she's doing well. But for someone to accuse me to be against mammograms for women that kind of hits personal. It, mm. it, you know, there's some subjects you can say, well, okay, what about this, what about that? But to, to go off and make such a blatant, um, uh, we'll it's say outrageous. lie, it's, it, it's it, outrageous. it is outrageous. And so one of the things that we did do is just last week we did a direct mail and we did it specifically focused upon, you know what, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And for all the women that are out there, by all means, Get yourself tested on a regular basis. Um, it's available to you, and absolutely take take advantage of this. Yeah. And just and then we were just sharing the story of the situation with my mom, and and that was probably the best thing that we could do to be able to say, you know what, this is important to everyone, and here is how it has impacted us as well as a family. What kind of reaction have you gotten from that piece? Pretty positive. Um, I, I you know I and the reaction that I. I'm a little hesitant because we've had some information on, on Facebook as well, and we've gotten significant receptivity of a positive nature on that. And, you know, by all means, who of us, I don't care whether you're mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, or what your affiliation is, who of us does not care for the women mm -hmm. out in society? I mean, we all have women in our lives that we clearly, dearly love. But obviously, we care about the women in society as well, and mm -hmm. we want them to live a life free of any potential for breast cancer and we want to see them get those mammograms done regularly mm -hmm. so it, it just seemed like a very very bizarre <laughs> and way out of line accusation well i have to commend <clears throat> you for your response because that's in all the years that i've been involved in politics it's probably one of the most professional and hardest hitting ways of responding. You, you hit that controversy right up front in a positive message. And I have to commend Good. you for that. Thank you. Thank and your, you. your family, they're holding up? Yeah, the family's holding up. Um, if you ever see the picture of, of, of all of us, one one is a daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. and then there's another um, that's in the Dad, family. Can you put that picture up? Are we able to do that on the website? Yeah. There it is. Great. You can kind of see. A little bit. The uh, my t um, There's one that's in the picture, uh -huh. and she is Asian. She's from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. mm. She is a foreign exchange student uh, that lived with us oh. for two years, her junior year and her senior year of high school. And I always encourage folks, I say, you know what, if you ever have the opportunity to, to host a foreign exchange student, do it. How if, long did you do that for? For two years. Two years, And okay. she's now 
kind yeah. of part of the family. She grew up pretty because, close. Uh, to the two yeah, years. she does, and she's up at North Dakota State University going to school. So when holidays come, she's back back with us. Now, does she speak uh, Cantonese or the Mandarin? It's Cantonese in I, Hong I think, Kong or yeah, Taiwan. I, I right? think it's Cantonese, Cantonese is what she's got. But uh, her English now is extremely good. Mm -hmm. Extremely good. So, any of that, I, I just point that out that it's it's a very good opportunity and if any family that might be listening to this has that opportunity for themselves, by all means, go ahead and host a foreign exchange student. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be a very beneficial uh, experience, not only for you know, parents, but also for the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, yeah. how how do you think uh, how how do you feel that the um, party and the local party apparatus has been mm -hmm. supporting your campaign? Are you uh, satisfied with the support you've been getting, or do you feel yeah. that they're detracting a little bit? Or? You know, they've been very very helpful. Um, they've been very cooperative. We've kind of uh, determined the messages that we want to convey out uh, to the constituents in our district, and they've gone along with that well. And at the same time, they've said, okay, what else can we do for you? And we said, you know, there is all this negative advertising that's hitting us on the Internet and TV. If, if by chance, you know, anyone out there can provide some additional funds, that would be great because we'd like to at least put something out to counter that and to make sure that people understand the this is not correct information that they're seeing and that they have come through uh, yesterday I received a couple of very large checks simply because um, Kurt Down and others have said yeah we really want to support Randy and they've gone out and they've they've pushed for it. Mm -hmm. so that's that's been just absolutely terrific so one other thing that I would just like to, to mention because uh, we're probably coming yep. close to the end is um, if you go back to that picture mm -hmm. <coughs> doubts he popped that up you could. Um, the, my son in the middle of the top of that picture, Oops. <clears throat> my son in the middle of that top picture, mm -hmm. he um, is a Marine officer. And the day after the election, we are flying out to Quantico, Virginia, and he is graduating as a Marine officer. Mm. And um, his grandfather, my wife's father, is a veteran. He's a Marine from the past. And coming up in November, we celebrate Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And so, the Marine Corps birthday. Okay, yes. <laughs> duly taken. I would certainly <laughs> I would get that. But I just want to say um, it, kind of in advance, um, by all means, I really appreciate anyone who serves or has family that serves in our armed forces. Well, Randy Jessup, thank, thank you, you for uh, coming on the Tony right. Hernandez Show. Thank you, Randy. Thank you to our viewing Good audience. Luck. Again, we broadcast live every Saturday from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock at SCC Television Studios. May God bless you, may God bless America, and bye con Dios.